I am going to visit Green School. Hidden in the bamboo forests in Bali, Indonesia, it's an international school and quite a legend already for its spectacular bamboo architecture and its radical green and sustainable vision. John Hardy and his wife Cynthia opened the school in 2008. It's an international school with students from all over the world. Green School wants the kids to become the green leaders of tomorrow. I will speak with students, teachers and founder John Hardy. His family became pioneers in bamboo technology just to be able to make their dream come true. Founding a school which is truly inspiring, close to nature and changes the way we take care of the world in the future. So my name is Kohali and I'm originally from Hawaii but I've lived in Asia for about 10 years now and I'm in grade 12, I'm graduating this year. I've been in green school since 8th grade, so this is my 5th year here. I think one of the highlights of just coming here to green school when I initially started is just the environment, the whole atmosphere of the school. It's not like your average school where it's really just like concrete, both metaphorically and literally very traditional. We are anything but orthodox. We are very unorthodox and the teachers are very unorthodox and we are very unorthodox. And even just looking at the classes like in the high school for example, we pick our courses, so we're not really told what to learn in per se, although we are required to pick certain tasks like English and math. We still have to fulfill all that, we still have requirements in order to graduate, but we're kind of just allowed to explore and experiment with what, we're, what we like, what we're into, our strengths and our weaknesses and all these things. We still have, of course, we still have the foundation of the traditional curriculum, but we still at the same time with our needs and let's see what the and the teachers backgrounds and their explorations they add we add our personal touch to that traditional curriculum so it's very unique and you wouldn't find anywhere else um, well I'm Olivia um, I'm in grade 10 um, so I'm 15 and so um, this is my second semester so I've been here six months and I'm planning on staying another year and a half I like how they don't really control you as much as they do at other schools. I mean, at other schools, it's a very set curriculum. You have all these rules you have to go to, you know, go by, and if you don't follow them, then you get in trouble. I mean, at this school, they like you to take control of your own education and the way that you live to be independent. And I think that's really, really important um, for when we leave school afterwards. Um, and I think also the teacher-student relationships are so good because it's not really I mean the teachers just have such a great behavior around the students and everything and it's kind of a friend relationship more than it is a parent uh, sorry a student teacher um, and I think that's really important yeah and this is always developing and this year I really feel like I embark on a, a path of unlearning everything that I, I knew true to be about teaching what I was taught at university maybe what I've been practicing for the last 10 years I find I've come to green school and it doesn't always necessarily apply. And the longer I'm at green school, the, the more I have to reflect on my teaching and, and how it really, I use the word teaching, I don't even feel like I'm doing teaching anymore. I really feel like I'm just kind of guiding my students through and giving them opportunities. And really it, it does come down to that point of unlearning everything and starting, starting fresh or starting with an open mind. Yeah. yeah, it's more individual coaching. Yeah, so I have a, for an example, I have a class that has just started this week and it's a class of 15 students and they're um, taking this class as an advanced art class so many of them are thinking that this might be something they want to bring into their career after green school and so it is very much a negotiation of talking with each of them of what their interests are and 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 tailoring a program that really does meet their needs but also there's a, an obligation of me to still provide them with the information they may need to, um, to support their journey so they're not completely on their own they have me yes. like a, I call it like the safety net we have some really unusual subjects and really, really specific. So fit last year, in year nine, um, every single block I had to choose earth science. Um, and I've completed all of those. And then this year in year 10, I have to take Asian history the whole year, which is okay, because I, it's interesting. And so this, but I mean, that's only one, one subject that we have to do. The, re the other five are completely up to us. We get to choose what we like. This building is two years old. This building is made out of bamboo. 
this building didn't exist on the planet six years ago. None of the material in this building existed six years ago, and that's, that's the story of bamboo. This bamboo comes out of the ground like a train. It went all the way up there in two months. Oh. Oh. Three years later, we cut it, we process it, and it becomes a building. So if you plant bamboo today, in just five years, you'll have all the bamboo you need for the rest of your life to build all the buildings you ever want to need. And that's why we chose bamboo to make Green School. So we have origins of life and we had um, oceans and uh -huh. pollution, Bali starlings, land management. Well, Green School, the roots of Green School came out of Waldorf. We didn't have enough constituents to have a Waldorf school. Yes. But we have a lot of Waldorf Waldorf energy and a lot of Waldorf beliefs in Green School. My kids, before we built Green School, were in the Waldorf system. I do, as in Steiner education and Waldorf Steiner. Yeah. Um, I actually have a few of the uh, the art books, the curriculum books from Waldorf yeah. Steiner. Yeah. And I think it's important to have a Although we don't follow a set curriculum, we're not Steiner, yeah. we're not Montessori. Yeah. However, yes. when you have a, a background or a information, then you can make informed decisions. Um, yes. So the Waldorf, I have, I've definitely I've read through the, the curriculum that they offer in the uh, Waldorf, and, and it's quite interesting in the stages that children go through and how they respond to that visually. Green School has developed a unique curriculum. High School is quite academic with its six-week modules, a bit similar to Waldorf traditions. A concept totally of its own is middle school. In the first two hours of the day, it's the experimental block. Discover the world with all your senses. Music, art, dance, sport, nature. In the second block, it's time for the basics. English and maths. Students can choose here a class with a specific level that meets their individual needs. The third block also continuing after lunch, is called thematics, science, history, and environmental themes, and more. Oh, it's thematics. So thematics is actually, we have a, a subject on something. So we had uh, land management. So for land management, we, we had to uh, virtually buy lands and sell them and make our own business. We also had um, origins of life, and we had um, oceans and uh -huh. pollution, Bali starlings, and all that stuff. In high school, students become more and more independent to choose the courses they like. So, the students will receive a, a timetable, and for example, on a Monday morning period one and two, it'll be a yellow class and they have a selection of maybe five or six classes they can choose in the, the yellow block. One of those classes might be an art class, it might be an English class, it might be a science class, and, and they're, they're completely autonomous over the, the subjects they, they choose at that particular time. The, the beauty or the, the good thing about having a six-week block, uh, at the moment I have 15 students that have closed, chosen my advanced class, but they're only locked in for six weeks. If at the end of six weeks they feel, you know, it wasn't quite where I wanted to go, it was, I enjoyed it, but I'm ready to move on and try something else, then they have that freedom to do so. And on the flip side of that, there's some students that sign up for that six-week class and they already know they're going to be there for the year. So the, the program I might negotiate with them would not necessarily be locked into six weeks. If they know that they're going to be there for the two or three blocks, then we might look at a project that spans that period of time. Yeah. So again... And you also have a stage where some music gigs are going yeah. on? Yeah. Every Friday we have like a, a school assembly and there's always a band and then there's like lots and lots of little kids jumping around and singing and it's really really fun it's about half an hour and the whole school community is involved all the teachers and the security guards like to hang around and watch because it's really fun and um, what are your plans after school I'd like to study law yeah so I think I'd probably graduate here there's a chance I might go back to Australia to do year 12 and then I'd like to go to Melbourne University and study yes. law there for a yes. few years. I wish I could have had more time to speak with more teachers and students. I wanted to speak with the Balinese kids in the special scholarship program. Donations help to pay their tuition, about $10,000 a year. It's quite a lot. 
John Hardy wants 20% local Balinese kids in the international school. As a non-profit organization, all money raised is invested in the school. Green School is growing constantly. There is also Green Farm, Green Camp and much more to report about. So, maybe I will be back next year.